6.35 in Trinidad and Tobago. Let's stay with the wage negotiation situation. We've heard from uh, economist uh, Dr. Indira Sajuan, but uh, let's now get the perspective of the president of the Contractors and General Workers Union, Ermine Dubik. Uh, all of the unions have effectively rejected uh, the initial counter-proposal by the chief personal officer, describing it as unacceptable, describing it in some cases, as, as we heard again from your Ramki soon yesterday at the Fire Services Association, as an act of war. Well, today we get the response from uh, Mr. Beek, and I suspect that uh, she would be uh, equally upset uh, with what would have been presented by the Chief uh, Personal Officer initially. Uh, Mr. Beek, very good morning to you. Um, uh, again, I I'm, I'm assuming that you would be in total disagreement with what was presented uh, by the Chief Personal Officer initially, but how would you respond to the assertion as the government is saying, it's, look, it's costing $19 billion annually uh, to sustain all these uh, public service jobs and given the state of the economy and the, there really isn't the room for anything better than 2% over eight years. Good morning to you, Ms. Dibik. Good morning, Fazir, and good morning to the viewing public. Firstly, I would like to indicate that my membership is totally dissatisfied with what was presented to us. You would have indicated in your pronouncements that um, the government has indicated the cost, the cost which the government will have to put forward as it relates to paying these workers increases that they are duly owed. It begs me to ask the question, when the salary review committee would have presented the increases in salaries for parliamentarians and persons would have questioned the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley. He would have indicated to the public, the general public, that that is the parliamentarian's entitlement. And therefore, he cannot do anything about it. But I want to tell the Prime Minister this morning and the Minister of Finance that what was presented to the working class of Trinidad and Tobago was very disrespectful and the workers want what is due to them. They want their entitlement for the period and I need to indicate in the offset that the contractors and general workers trade union reject outright that five-year period that was presented by three years. At no point in time did the contractors and general workers trade union submitted proposals for the periods that were indicated in the document that was presented to us by the CPU. We would have submitted proposals for 2014 to 2016 and proposals for 2017 to 2019. So it is a total disrespect what was done to the working class, to the different trade unions, so, so let me just so let me just jump in, Ms. Let, let me just jump in, Mr. Big. But, but as, as the, okay, let me use the words of the Prime Minister. Don't overreact. This is a negotiation. This is the first stage, and, and therefore, as upsetting as it is, you have to stay involved in the process rather than than marching on Friday because it's only by negotiation that the terms will be improved. I totally disagree because this cannot be a first stage when we would have submitted proposals for periods and when what was presented to us did not take into consideration the proposals which were presented. So on the offset, they went off track. They were derailed. You cannot present something contrary to what the unions would have proposed. I am quite aware that some unions did not even um, send in proposals for 2017 to 19. So how you can send counter proposals? Yes, you can send counter proposals, but the industrial landscape of Trinidad and Tobago 
We normally negotiate for three-year period. I have heard the Minister of Finance smiling and indicating that the industrial relation 43 one indicates that we could go to five years. Yes, it said so, but we have never gone. That was never placed on the table. So if we are negotiating, things are supposed to be put on the table and they ought to have discussions and agreed upon. You cannot compile a document and hey, look here, that is not the way we negotiate. So if it is the government intent to negotiate in that manner, we in the trade union movement is saying quite categorically, no, we are not prepared to take that sort of disrespect by this PNM government. And we therefore, are not Ms. sitting down idly by them taking this. And therefore, Ms. Devik, what is when is the next round of, of, of discussions with the CPO that will involve your union? Because we're hearing in some cases it's June the 10th, in other cases it's June the 13th. Uh, what, what, what is the next date for your union to meet with the CPO? Well, the CPO have indicated to us on that day, that day, um, the 19th of May, that he would expect us to, um, to respond to what he would have presented to us and that we would meet, I think is either the 15th or the 16th of um, June. He has indicated that he will meet with the daily paid unions. Okay, so the 15th on the 16th, and uh, just so we can understand, will you, uh, will your union be involved in that proposed march on Friday? Of course, yes, my union would be out there in full force. And how would you respond to what we heard from the Labour Minister, Mr. McClashy, yesterday, saying that, look, now is not the time to march, now is the time to get around the table and come up with counter-proposals to what the CPO has presented? I want to ask Mr. McClashy, Minister McClashy, a question. Where was he all the time? How all of a sudden he got voice? Did he have an attack of COVID that he couldn't speak? How all of a sudden he knows that we're supposed to come round the table? Why didn't they come round the table and come round the table as we are accustomed doing? They have removed, they have changed how we negotiate and we are not prepared to, to accept that. And, and therefore, Ms. Debeek, the question has to be asked, uh, it, because the government continues to present information which suggests that there's going to be no backing down from, from this proposal as insulting as it would appear to the unions, because again, Finance Minister yes, yesterday talked about $19 billion being the overall cost. The Prime Minister, when he came back from Guyana on Sunday, talked about how much this 2% increase over eight years is going to cost the taxpayers. Uh, it appears that the government is digging its heels in um, the union might, might be marching, but ultimately the CPO can only propose what he is authorized by the finance minister. Did he take into consideration when the parliamentarians got their increases what, what it would have cost the taxpayers? Over this period that these workers did not get increases, there were increases more than five times there were increases in grocery items. The, the Minister of Finance himself laughed, joked, when he increased the oil, the gas price, on so many occasions. This is insulting. They are indirectly provoking the workers to riot. They are, that is a provoking presentation that they would have been, that they would have presented to each union leader on the 19th of may and i will never forget that day as long as i live the 19th of may what was presented to the labor leaders in trinidad and tobago who represent public sector workers and Mr. Big, before time runs out on us, and we certainly appreciate uh, your, your, your candor and your emotion in relation to, to, to this issue. Beyond the march that is scheduled to happen on Friday pending police approval, what are you hoping will happen? What are you hoping will happen by the next time you turn up to the table with the CPO uh, on either the 15th or the 16th? What would you like to hear from the CPO? I hope good sense would prevail 
because we are looking forward to cola we need the government the cpo as the government agent to present coal on the table the consolidation of cola and we are also looking forward to the government removing that five-year period in order for us to come to the table and discuss they need number one to remove that five-year period they need number two to indicate the cola that would be placed on the worker's salary and the years that it would be consolidated because when they increase and i will continue to say this when they increase the um the the the, the salary of the parliamentarian they did not know that that was causing the taxpayers these workers are taxpayers so when they increase the salaries for the parliamentarian they did not come to the public and indicate that this is the amount that it was causing the um the taxpayers but they want the general public to know what it will cost the workers and this is showing that this present government do not care about the workers they are looking for buy-in from the general public against the working class. They knew that the workers were essential during COVID. But you are not putting anything that on the table that represents how these workers perform during the COVID. And that has to be taken into consideration. It's of workers who never went on during this period. They work round the clock to accommodate what was taking place in Trinidad and Tobago. And today, the government has not presented something that is meaningful to the working class of Trinidad and Tobago. And okay. I will continue to say, this government has shown total disrespect for the working class. And I want the working class to understand and to support their leaders because the union is as strong as its members. Do not allow those sicko fans out there to tell them not to come out and support your leaders because your leaders are doing everything, everything in the interest of its members. Mr. Beek, we have to leave it there for the moment. And again, we certainly understand uh, your, your emotions and your passion in this regard. We thank you very much indeed for taking the time to be with us uh, on uh, this Wednesday morning. Thank you very much indeed. As we come around towards 6.48 in Trinidad and Tobago, here's an image that is captioned, uh, Julie Mango Blossoms, uh, with a Julie Mango uh, ripening in uh, the background. It was taken from an iPhone 11 from Marcus in Princess Town. Very nice indeed as we head to the break. Thank you.